So I've got my stencil cut, it's complete. It's a little bit easier to see on the back side just because there's not all that extra information from the front. So since this is my key <clears throat> stencil, I now need to get the information from this stencil onto my next stencil. So this was one of the other pieces of tag board that I cut to the same size. The first thing that I wanna do is transfer my registration marks to the next page. So the way I prefer to do that is by drawing through extremely precisely. So I just trace that as best I can with, and I prefer just a, just a mechanical pencil because it's nice and pristine, good sharp. It's not gonna bleed on me. And I put a couple of weights on there just to ensure that, um, just to ensure it doesn't move when I do that. So of course, if you're concerned about orientation later, maybe smart to go top and bottom. Okay, so my next step here is that I actually wanna cover these registration areas because if I were to spray through this and onto these, there's a chance that my spray could go through and fuzz out a little bit. And I need super clean and crisp marks so I can, so I can get everything lined up well. So I'm actually gonna place that down here. Um, I don't have any tape up in here, so I'm just gonna put a little spray adhesive on the back of each. It's a tiny bit, just enough to stick it and not enough to really damage the surface when I try to pull it off. I used to actually just spray this through to create like a print of that. And then I discovered just the more you use it, the more um, that that overspray messes those up. So I realized it's probably best to just put those in there by hand, right? And then have them covered. And I'm using a spray booth here in our graphics lab. Um, I used to do this project out, outdoors because of course spray paint is not good for you to breathe. Oh wait, I should have should have lined it up first before I put those on. I'm glad I caught that. <laughs> okay. I forgot a step, my bad. This happens. I need to put a touch of spray adhesive on the back of this, register it and line it up, and then I'll cover these. Kind of got mixed up there a little bit. Um, the reason we put spray adhesive on the back is because we want a solid and clean connection to this. We don't want it to like bubble up when we spray. A lot of times when we add spray to it, that the force of the air um, and or spray paint that's coming out of there is gonna cause this to fuzz a little bit. We want it clean, right? But we want the amount of spray adhesive that's just gonna stick it down and make it to where we can still release it. So you don't want a lot, right? Um, you just wanna find dusting just enough to hold it down. So I've got protective paper in here. My exhaust is running. So I just hit it really lightly, right? That right amount to have the stickiness, but not so much that it's gonna rip up my paper. I'm gonna try to remove it. You could use a vacuum table. A lot of printmakers will design one of those. There we go. And I'm just gonna stick it down as best I can. So now I've got these registered and I'm gonna cover them up so they don't print through. In the future, what I'll most likely do is make like a tape hinge on these so I don't have to keep sticking them down. I'll just make it to where I can flip them back and forth. So now what I'm doing is I'm printing my black information onto my yellow stencil. Um, it may be easier to do something where it's just slightly tilted, but I think I can get around that here. I'm just using like a flat black. I prefer flat black. Seems to print better, it looks nicer. I don't want any 
drips or anything. So I want to make sure that my nozzle's clean. So I spray through it a few times. Now, when I spray this, I'm actually going to get fairly close to it, right? And be authoritative about it. I prefer not to go with just a continuous spray. I like to hit it with just an authoritative spray that's somewhat perpendicular to the surface, right? Because I don't want to angle it too much because if it's, if it's not totally stuck down to that piece, it's going to float up and it's going to make a blur, right? Plus you got to remember on this piece, um, I don't need a good print. I just need the evidence of the one print or the one stencil to move to the next one so I can make my plans on the yellow. Um, in a traditional printmaking class, we would call this counterproofing. So counterproofing makes it to where, I'm just gonna clean that nozzle out, there we go. Counterproofing makes it to where uh, the information is shared from one substrate, plate, stencil, whatever, to the next. I'm just gonna release these two. So when I pull this up, I want to be pretty cautious that I don't hurt my stencil at all because it, it certainly could get hurt. Okay. So I'm going to let my stencil fume off for a bit. So this functions as, well, a proof. And I'm like, okay, well, do I need more information in here? Do I need to go back and cut anything to make this more descriptive? but it also functions to make those plans for what I want to do on my yellow stencil, right? So I want to let this completely dry out. Um, so I'm probably just going to stick it in the, uh, in the exhaust for a little bit, fume off on both sides so that the glue dries and so that my uh, paint dries as well. And now I'm ready to start making decisions about my, um, the yellow that I'm going to create, right? So let's put this boy back in here. And we head back to the studio. So my next step here, um, after I've taken the black and proofed that onto what's going to be my yellow um, stencil here, I made some selections about what I wanted to be yellow. Um, I find the best way to do that is to actually take a colored pencil and work on top of this to get a good feel for what that's going to look like. Because when you do that, um, and you can kind of see a little bit left over in these areas, um, that, that yellow will go into the white spaces and it's not really going to cover the black up. So you get a reasonable idea of how that's going to go. So I drew some new information on this one because I wanted some of the petals from this um, flower to kind of look like they were falling off and filling this negative space. I also wanted select areas on this dome to be yellow. Like I wanted the whole crown of this to be yellow. So I cut that out. I wanted all of these um, sort of structural ribs on here to be yellow as well. And in these areas, and I had to be, I had to concern myself again with bridges, right? Um, I actually kind of forgot about that until I started working and I realized, oh, you know, I, I have to make sure that these things are held together, otherwise they fall out. So the next step here then is to take my yellow information and to print that onto my next um, piece of tag board that I'm going to make into my red stencil. Now, I'm first going to spray yellow on top of this. I'm going to let that yellow dry. Then I'm going to come back and spray black on top of it because I want to have a realistic idea of what those two colors are doing when they interact. That way I have a good understanding of where I can place my red and influence both of these stencils, right? Then I'll be moving on to blue. So, um, I guess. Some bottles on here. I did forget to trace my forgot to trace my registration marks on there. I hope I have a pencil of some sort. Luckily I do. Now when I cut my registration marks on this yellow stencil, I made sure to cut exactly on the line. 
because when you draw inside of your triangles, right, you're adding a little pencil thickness to that. And if I were to cut inside the line, then it wouldn't match up, right, with my um, registration marks as such. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put spray adhesive on the back of this so I can adhere it down. Then I'm going to do some tape to cover these up, right? So I'm just going to flip this over. Got my exhaust going. Again, if you don't have a facility like this, um, a garage with high ceilings would be good. Again, Kansas Wind, very combative with spray stencils, but if it's a nice day, you can probably get away with that. The main thing is you don't want to be breathing this stuff, right? Little tiny bit. Looks like I got some splatter to some degree on there. So that might cling a little more than I wanted to, but I'm going to let it dry off just a touch. So it's not quite as tacky. Just want a really, really slight stick. Something that I can pull back off if needed. And I'm going to be pretty picky about this registration too. I want to make sure it's as perfect as possible because if I don't perfect my registration, right, then my future stencils are not going to line up with the previous stencils. That looks really good to me. So I'm just going to stick it down now. I'm not pushing hard necessarily. Earlier, I think I used like some extra tag board to cover those registration marks. This time I'm just going to use a little bit of tape and I'm going to just kind of pull some of the sticky off so it doesn't destroy my stencil. I want something again that I can pull off. I might, I might put a little bit of like lint from my apron on there. Like we kind of want to simulate like frog tape. Like we don't want to damage the surface of the stencil, but we want it to stop out. Okay, so now I'm ready to transfer my yellow. Now, of course, when I do this, some of my old information is going to get covered up because that spray will occur. Um, but doesn't mean I can't go back later if I change my mind about where stuff is spraying. Sorry, I'm cleaning this out. There we go. I certainly could do that. Same thing as before. Authoritative short bursts. Sometimes I go, when I have a big section like this, I'll go a couple of different angles on it. I don't need a crap load on there. I just need enough to get the information through. I'm gently going to pull this up. I'm going to be really careful not to disturb the surface of that paint as it dries off. So I've got a pretty good idea about where this is going to fall. Um, I'm really liking what I see there. So this is kind of like a singular proof as well, like you would do in a traditional printmaking situation, um, showing proof of what's on your plate or your substrate. So I'm going to set this aside and let this dry off a bit. When I'm certain that my paint is dry on here, then I'm going to go ahead and adhere this. Okay? If I put this on here right away and this is still sticky, it's going to stick my stencil to the paper. It's going to destroy my stencil, right? So it is important to make sure that you're cautious about drying time. Nice thing about spray paint is it dries really quickly. So I've allowed this to dry enough to where when I put my hand on it, it's not even tacky. It shouldn't be tacky at all. Um, it's one of the reasons that I like matte spray paint. It dries a little bit faster and, you know, the glossy stuff when it builds up, it, it has an effect that just doesn't make it like unified, right? Um, the problem is that I have to put spray adhesive on this stencil in order to stick it down. So that means that these areas here that are going to come into contact with this 
are going to be affected, right? So like if this is wet and I lay this down on top, my spray adhesive is going to mix intermingle with the paint with the paint and then it's going to it's going to mess up the whole image right so it's very important that you make sure that you know in any multiple stencil situation that you let that previous stuff dry off really well um, okay you might even want to heat gun it right for for the sake of getting it done quicker a little bit of spray adhesive on this one and since for some reason this i don't know why but for some reason this can is starting to get gloppy. I'm just going to go really brief, tiny little bit, right? And it got gloppy anyways. Probably just need to clean it off some. Okay. So now I go to registration and again, be picky in registration because it matters, right? And I'm going to lightly tack it down, especially where I have really complicated stuff in here. I'm going to tape off those registration marks. too small. I like get it to cover. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop some black on top of this. Same as before. Consistency is king when it comes to printmaking. Get into a routine. Kind of think of yourself like the print machine, right? The more consistent you are, the better your prints are going to look. Okay. Short blast. In this case, I don't necessarily have to make it perfect, right? Because this is my red stencil, but it's not a bad idea for you to practice making sure that when you layer up your collars, that you do have a good consistent amount. So that tells me that I probably need a little bit more here because I can see that yellow more, right? And again, it's better to build it up than to try to get it all in one shot because if it's too much, put way too much paint on there, you're gonna have a lot of issues when it comes to pulling this back off and printing subsequent collars. So now let's see what it looks like. Again, being very careful here. Nice gentle pull on this, especially where I have all those weird organic elements in there because I don't wanna like smear any of that paint because I could at any at any point and then we let the black dry off so now I have a really good idea about how my yellow and my black are interacting and I can make plans for my red and my blue from here all right so this is going to be my red stencil um I kind of had a preliminary plan going on with you know some of these things and looking at the results of this I'm feeling like I can get more articulation out of the inside of the chrysanthemum. I really like what I was able to pull off with my etching here, um, but of course I had to use bridges in there. So I'm thinking I can use some red shading to kind of help with that. Um, in some areas, maybe overlap. I know that I want to try something kind of experimental with the, um, with the tiling on, on the top of this dome. So, the first thing I'm going to do is like the obvious stuff that I know that I want red. So I'm just going to go in with my colored pencil. I'm going to say I want these elements of the dome to be red, but I want to leave the yellow, right? Because I like the yellow ribbing on there. And as I'm coloring this, right, it's showing me, well, over here at how much articulation, the black's always going to cover up what I do here. Um, doesn't mean that I shouldn't put something under there. You know, it might make a more dramatic effect in the black. But in this area, I know I'm gonna get a lot more texture, right? Because it's more open. So I'll make those decisions when I get a little bit closer there. And I'm also gonna like add some more information to this um, up in here. Something similar to what I had on my red. 
Um, let's see. I think I, yeah, this is backwards from what I had. I like the idea of doing the alternation on here. So yeah, I'm going to go in here and say that this will be red across here. Like this window area. Maybe, maybe it would make sense for me to bring that all the way down to this next level. And then kind of perfect this thing here because I had to have bridges with the black, right? But using multiple colors helps us to, helps us to make a more complete image because we don't have to have bridges that are exactly the same on each matrix. Um, so I'm going to skip that one. I want to make that like a lighter blue. We'll do that later. So I'm going to go in here and make this one red to alternate. But that'll be a decision that I make when I get to my blue stencil, which is next after I cut my red stencil and proof it over. So I'll go with those. I kind of like the idea of like treating this dome similarly to what I'll do here. So let's repeat that down here. Let's flesh out this dome. Just want to give this like building some more interest in color. Plus some of this stuff down here is just so simple because of the detailed stuff that I had to use with bridges. And so I think that this will add some more interest as such. Um, looks like I have another weird kind of dome thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and articulate that. And I'm just going to bring that out like this. I kind of need to make a decision here about what I'm going to do with this one. It's also a dome, but I've got a series of windows here, so I think it would be a good idea for me to just make this part of the, yeah, this part of the dome up in here red. I think I'll go ahead and add a little line work down there, open that up. Okay. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to move over to the flower. I'm just going to kind of look off of this and see what I can do to make this a little bit more, um, just a little bit more complete in terms of description. Basically, anywhere that I decide that I'm going to be adding the red, I'll be cutting an opening in there. And so I'm just going in here and shading out some contours that are going to help to describe all those little delicate areas where all those bunching of the kind of smaller petals and things are coming out. Let's see, I feel like I should break that up a little bit here. Come around like that. And again, the awesome thing about this is like I automatically start getting a good idea for what it's going to look like by drawing straight on top. Something that traditional printmakers use all the time to form those ideas, have a reliable understanding of what's going to happen. And because I have that black in certain areas, right, I don't have to cut my red stencil like completely out like this where this would fall out because <clears throat> I still want that to stop out. I would only have to cut the red areas. Looking at this, what does that describe? That kind of looks like a... I'm just going to break that up just a little bit here. And create an independent kind of petal happening in there. Maybe I'll create a contour up in there and get this to describe something. I feel like if I break this up a little bit, I'll allow for a little bit of yellow in here, a little bit of yellow here. I don't want that to read as an independent petal here. Complete that one. Keep that little yellow channel. I like that. I've got to be careful though, because like I'm already seeing that I want to extend this all the way out. Um, and I don't know that I 
actually want that for this piece. Like I kind of like some of the abstraction ambiguity in some of these areas, so I've got to find a good area to terminate this shading. I feel like this suggestion here, that would be helpful. Got it going on here. This will be where I kind of create that termination. Work that here. This is somewhat ambiguous here, so I think I'll maybe add a little bit of modeling to that. I think I will create something of a suggestion of this moving out to some degree. Just unify some of the petals with the rest of the structure. But again, I don't want to get in over my head with this to where I have to model everything. I'm making reference to that gestalt psychology concept again. Like the human brain doesn't need all of this information to process. You can make inferences. Let's see here. I think I'll add a little bit of Channel there. Get that to. Oh, yeah, I dig that pretty well. That's going to work. Okay. Um, this area is a little awkward, so I think I'll go in and create like a repetition of this thing and then just allow it to fade out a little bit. And this is kind of another awkward spot there. Shore this up a little bit. Okay, I feel like that's going to do well. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I kind of wanted up in here was something of an atmosphere. Um, but before I get into that, I'm going to go ahead and create my print border so I don't usurp that later. So and I'm just working off of what I have here um, with, my, with my stencil pieces being roughly the same size. That's very helpful, too, because I'm just using the thickness of the ruler. If you were worried about this and making it exact, you could make them all the exact same size. It might not be a bad idea for you. I'm not too worried about it in this piece, though. Because I have some good anchors that are showing me where my, where my print border is, like with this here and with this down here. Okay. All right, so I was kind of thinking about, like, I don't know, sort of an Andromeda spiral type thing in here. Something that kind of works off of this. As it kind of, to me, this sort of points. It has a, a gesture of movement that points straight up. Very architectural, right? And this sort of has like a more organic thing happening. And I kind of like want to balance those two. So I was going to think about kind of like a, what would it look like if I had sort of a spiral emanating from here. I'm just doing this in pencil so that I can work out my ideas and erase if I don't like it. A lot of times when I'm doing stuff like this, I'll try to draw over the, the information so it looks continuous, right? Like it's not gonna matter if I draw over this information because it's not gonna dictate how I cut. Like that doesn't work. I don't like that at all. Erase that part. 
So now I'm going to work with this a little bit and kind of, yeah, I like that balance. There's kind of a triangulation happening. I'm going to kind of work with this a little bit. I think my, my idea here is that I really want to go with like a heavy, like heavier in the center and then maybe lighter as it goes out. So I'm just going to kind of start shading along with my line work here a little bit. Again, I emphasize this a lot in my drawing class, right? Don't force your hand, the arc of your wrist, to do anything that's just not going to agree with the natural form. So that's why I move my paper around all the time. Like, it's going to look unnatural. It's going to look forced, right? So I think I'm going to make this a little thicker inside of here just to emphasize more. And then I'll allow it to get thinner as it goes out. And I'm going to add a little bit of like some shading with some like dots kind of suggesting maybe particles or stars or something coming out from this. Just want it to kind of give it a surreal quality, something that is kind of imaginative and fun. Kind of takes you into like a, some sort of a quizzical nature of like what's going on, why is this happening, all that business. And I'll probably use some of the blue plate to help support this as well. And if I decide at any point, like, oh, you know, I'd like to see a little bit of black in this atmosphere, I can easily do that by just taking my black stencil and printing it back on top of this, right? Or I could even lay it over the surface and just trace the imagery through, right? So... Like with my other, uh, my key plate, right? I'm gonna cut everything out that's red, so I don't see a need to go over this stuff in Sharpie or anything. Um, so I'm just gonna kinda continue with that whole idea of, you know, what's it gonna look like if I have some little floaters in between here? Maybe some that are sort of fading out a little bit. Kinda create some continuity to some degree. Because like with relief, and other media that we're gonna be working with, we have to deal with the absolute aspect of it, right? It's either a mark or it's not a mark. And in order to get any kind of an illusion of a fade, we have to do something like hatching, cross hatching, or in this case, some stippling to make it to where it creates that illusion of, um, that, that illusion of fading or shading, so to speak. I think as I get out here, I'm just going to only have a little, like a few little guys, just kind of representing that. And as I'm drawing, right, I'm trying to be conscientious about like avoiding need, the need for any kind of a bridge or anything. So I'm trying to keep my marks far apart or far enough apart that I won't have to worry about that. Some smaller ones down here. A lot of times when I'm drawing like this, whether it's pen and ink or, you know, um, relief or anything that requires this sort of binary marking, this all or nothing type marking, um, I'll unfocus my eyes as I'm working. And that can give me like a, a sense of how that's going to actually fade. Or I'll get away from it, like, you know, two or three feet or so. so if I hold it back and I can see a significant amount of kind of fading out, right? Then I feel like it's good to go. So now at this point, I'm going to give, I'm going to begin cutting. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get these registration marks cut. And like I said before, you want to be really precise with these. Because this isn't the black stencil, we want to make sure that we're cutting exactly on the line. That way, the registration mark nestles in neatly with the black and matches with the black and the yellow. They all have to match in order for us to have a four color print with high fidelity. Also, if you're trying to do any sort of an addition, that's gonna be important. You've gotta keep consistency. 
And this is how we do that. And there's a million different registration processes, but the basic philosophy is some manner of keeping things consistent and predictable. Again, I do not recommend circles. If you're going to do circles, do like 15 of them so that you have to that you have to line them all up perfectly, right? It's got to be really unique. Okay, so now what I do is I set about cutting out all my red. Um, there's going to be a lot of strategy going on with this one, right? I, anything that's going to call for me to, to need a bridge, like a good example of that would be like right here. Again, if I were to cut this completely out and cut through all the black, this would fall out. Instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut until I hit the black, and I'm going to cut just inside the black. That way, where that color terminates, it, it's not going to be obvious, right? Because the black's going to cover the red up anyways. So that means in this case, I'll come back over here. And if I need a, if I need a bridge, I need a bridge. So be it as such. Like this area, probably not going to work for me very well because I'm so close here. So what I'll probably do to modify that is just kind of come in close to it and just terminate a bit early. And then I'll make another small mark here to kind of join that black. Now I always like to check on the other side just to see, right? This is not going to be near as descriptive as when we look at it like this, right? I have something red that I can put under there, like this. Yeah, because if we look at that as though it's red, right? That's going to look more complete. So this is going to require a lot more diligence, time, energy. This stuff over here, I'm just going to cut it out as a solid. But when I do that, I want to make sure that I'm cutting just inside of my black mark. Because I don't want to see a white space between the red and the black. And one thing I'm going to be conscientious of is this yellow, right? Because my red's going to be printed after my yellow, usually. And if I want my yellow to show up here, I cannot cut into that. I've got to try to stay outside of that. So here I'm just going to try to line this up as perfectly as I can with my yellow while still staying inside that black. Here I've got a lot more leeway. Now if I just wanted a flat color in here, I'd leave it open, right? But I'm going to try kind of an experimental thing. Um, I'm going to try to use like some window screen back here to give it a really tight, kind of interesting matrix. We'll see how it works. Um, if it doesn't work, then I'll just leave it open, right? got my red where I feel like a feel like I'm happy with it again kind of flipping it over it gives you a more pure sense of what it's going to look like all that extra modeling I think is going to really help the interior part of that um, flower and then I'm really digging what I did with this atmosphere and I'm just going to leave these open for now later I'm going to experiment with like putting a screen or a texture or something on there and you certainly are welcome to do that I encourage experimentation um, so what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to take my yellow, my red, my black. I'm going to combine those onto my fourth stencil, and this will become my blue stencil. Now, it doesn't mean I'm stuck to that, right? Later, if I choose to like try different colors on each one or maybe mess up the order a little bit, I can experiment with different ways of creating a, a more unique look, right? So first step here, like with the others, and I waited until everything was 100% dry, right? I'm gonna go ahead and take my black, my key. I'm gonna lay that on my new stencil. And I'm gonna trace the registration marks from the black. I think my last one, like when I did the red, I believe that I traced my yellow to that. Um, you wanna avoid that if you can. You wanna try to make it to where you're, you're registering everything to the key stencil. But I think I'll be okay. Um, so my next step here is adhering this. Actually, my next step is that I'm going to, I wanna drop my yellows first and then the reds on top so that I can get a good understanding of how they're interacting. So yeah, I'm gonna adhere the yellow. <clears throat> I mean, I suppose I could have done the red first, but I really want a good idea of how my image is developing. Over time, you're gonna end up with kind of a buildup of spray adhesive on here. And it might require that you put a little bit more on. That's why I really emphasize a small amount in the beginning. You just want the right amount to get your piece stuck. And again, be picky with your registration. Always be picky with your registration. This process will become second nature to you over time. Covering up my stencil holes or my registration holes. Push down to make sure I get a good clean image. And time for yellow. For a few here just to make sure that I get enough yellow saturation in there since it's a very big space. And again, I, I've got to remember to allow for drying time in between. So once you get to the point to where you're laying down several different layers, patterns, stencils, matrices, it's gonna take a little bit longer for each one to dry. And again, that might become a heat gun situation, right? So I'm gonna let this go for just a little bit. All right, so I'm dry, dry to the touch. That's important. Like I had to put a lot more paint on this one just because of those big open areas. So I wanna be really, really cautious with that. I'm just gonna take a quick look here. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move to my red that I just cut out. I'm gonna add some spray adhesive to the back of this one. This would be the first time I put spray adhesive on this, so I'm gonna try not to put too much. Okay, feels pretty good. All right. Tight registration. That looks pretty good. Okay. All right, time for the red. Oh, almost forgot. 
I had to cover up those registration marks so that I can continue registering. Now, I don't have like a nice dark red, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna switch out my paper so I have some clean paper to work on top. You don't want a bunch of garbage like, you know, spray adhesive and other paint in there. I do have this, um, it's a fire orange, is what it's called, but it's pretty close to a red. So I think it's gonna give me kind of what I'm looking for here. Um, but I need to get, I need to get to the hardware store and pick up some more some more paint here. Let's see how. Okay. All right, authoritative marks. This drip is an issue. It's an older can, um, so I'm trying to make sure I'm not over the top of my stencil because a drip like that is going to cause a lot of problems for me. It's one of the reasons I like to go with just short bursts. And I accidentally got some right there and that's going to cause a problem for sure. So I think what I'm going to do just out of concern for here, do much up in there. There we go. Just out of concern for making sure my stencil doesn't stick right to the actual print. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit first and then pull it up. Ah, yep. So this area where I got that drip, it, um, it invaded this area out here that I didn't want to get orange or rather red on. So this is one of those things that's, I mean, it's kind of a pitfall that happens, right? Um, so an older can like that, that's got a bunch of garbage on the, on the spray nozzle, it's worth your time to clean that off, you know, whether it's uh, using a little bit of acetone and exacto knife, or sometimes you can even just get a fresh nozzle and pop it back on there. Right. Um, but not a bad thing for you to see because that'll give you a good idea of like what that's going to look like when that, when that problem happens. So I'm going to let this dry for a bit longer. I want to make sure this is a hundred percent dry um, before I even approach this with my black. Got my yellow. I've got my red, which looks more like an orange, of course, but um, I'll be printing that in red later. Now I'm ready to drop my black on top and that's going to inform me as to where all my blue should go. Right. So a little bit of spray adhesive on the back. It doesn't feel like it's sticky still. So it seems like I usually have to add a little bit. Sometimes you might not have to. Make sure that, that paint's dry. Just be mindful that if you do add too much and it wants to stick more permanently, it's going to mess up your previous colors. So it's important to develop this system and um, stick to it, right, consistently. Pretty sticky, but okay, now I'm gonna register. That looks pretty good to me. Time to spray. Oh, I think I'll clean 
this up a little bit. Some fresh paper here. Gonna let that dry for just a second. Sometimes when you've got a black mat and you print it over the top of these other colors, it'll look like it's covered, but then as it dries, it'll start to kind of show the previous colors a little bit. And this is good practice for when you're gonna do, you're gonna run your addition. So I'm gonna hit this area a little bit more. Get that a lot more solid. Okay, that's a good deal of paint there. All right, I'm gonna bring that out, take a look. When I do this, I really try to focus on holding my print down. I don't want to get my stencil in contact with any wet paint. So yeah, I knew that I would probably see that mistake here just because I knew that was like a white space, right? So understanding that means that I'm going to have to be really careful when it comes to um, those tight registration areas. But now what I can do after this is totally dry is I can begin plotting where I want to drop some of my blue. And I like some of this, I do. Um, but I think it could actually benefit from some blue in there as well. So I might go in and do some extra modeling, you know, between the red and the blue, just to make that a little bit more, um, just to make it a little bit more explanatory. I'm also going to be using the blue to describe the shading parts of these little flat shapes that I made that are supposed to be the leaves or the rather petals falling down. I'm going to use a lot of blue to kind of help reinforce what's happening with this kind of galaxy thing as well. And I'll be adding some areas of blue in here. So I'm going to let my stencils dry out once again and take this back to the studio and begin, begin figuring out my blues so that I can carve my final stencil. All right. So here I am with my going to be blue stencil, right? Um, I used a hair dryer to dry this off a little bit because I just wanted to get right to it, right? Um, something you're going to discover as you're going through this process that you'll, you'll have some like dried glue left over. Um, if you use too much spray adhesive, it's going to collect like dirt, dust, gross stuff, things like that. But you can usually, once it totally dries, gently use a vinyl eraser to get those things off. So I'm just kind of like cleaning up, cleaning this up because I've had three stencils on top of this now with spray adhesive. Okay, so I know that I wanna go ahead and go in here and alternate with this. I kinda of like that pattern idea. Um, I think I'm gonna to try to keep these white in between or you know, maybe I'll go back to another stencil, maybe cut open the, the yellow in that area, could be interesting or I'm even contemplating at this point adding a fifth stencil, but for the sake of getting the demonstration um, in a fluid manner, I'm gonna stick with the four stencils for now. Um, let's see, I think, I think another good location for me to add some blue would be like in these windows to kind of scaffold. To kind of create a more completed look to that. Another thing is that I don't necessarily have to print all of these with a perfectly flat color. Like if I wanted to, I could spray all these areas that'll be open with blue and if let it dry a little bit. And if I wanted to like influence that, I could come across the top with like a white and kind of get it to tint a little bit. Um, there's a lot of different ways we can approach this to make it more 
to make it more interesting. So let's see, I think I'm going to go with this kind of a orientation over here. I'm just going to kind of complete that perspectival box happening there. Get that corner worked out. Um, kind of seems logical that I should probably scaffold under here, create something of a shadow. I don't know if I want to do that everywhere, but I think I'm going to do that at least underneath underneath these two domes here. Uh, I'm going to have to think on this stuff just a little bit. I know I don't just want it to be three colors, right? I want it to be a little bit more interesting. So I am going to go up into the flower here and just pick out a few areas that I think could be more interesting with some extra shading, right? Um, so it could be kind of nice if I did this kind of a thing. Like made this, these areas where the petals are coming out from a center darker and maybe fade away a little bit. And there's some things I can do to kind of create that illusion of a fade, like by cutting wide channels and then progressively smaller channels that pull away from that. And what I'll do is I'll use the orange in here, or rather red. Like I'll, I'll stay out of those zones so that they can act as bridges. That, that way I can just go ahead and cut straight up to that. I'm just gonna kind of fade these little guys. Um, I'll just go ahead and it could be nice to add a little bit of a fade to that. I think if I could add a little bit of some color in here. Maybe a little bit in here. I'm going to have to be a little bit creative with that because I can't just cut that out completely, right? I'll have to, I'll have to think about bridges in those areas, but I know I want to, I, j I just want to like create a little bit more interest in the inside. A bit here, kind of a thing. And a lot of times when I'm cutting, you know, I'll come up with an idea to add a little bit more shading to different areas. Like before I didn't even like draw these things out, but I, I felt like having a little bit of red to help with the contour was going to help the flower look a little bit more dynamic as such. So for now, I'm going to stick with that stuff. I think I might go ahead and add a little bit of shading from these just so that those red areas don't look so lonely or out of place or whatever. Right here, just kind of a fade out to some degree. Right here. And you'll get the hang of this whole problem solving. Like, you know, eventually, my hope is the stenciling and cutting will become this activity or action that is akin to drawing. Like, kind of drawing with your exacto knife. Right. I know I want to get a good deal of blue to support this in here. So I'm going to go in here and be pretty, be pretty clean with how I codify this. I kind of want the colors to be next to each other. And I think that's going to really help create more dynamism in that spiral. If you're somebody who likes to plan, right, and you don't want to work kind of on the fly like I do with this, um, you know, feel free to make a completely color-coded drawing. Bring it in. We'll problem solve how to make those steps happen. I'm kind of doing those on the outside, so I'll just kind of get some larger marks out here. Now, like spray paint, unless you treat it like with a finer dusting or you influence it in some way, um, to make it to where it doesn't cover up previous colors, it will cover up what you've already printed. So, like, I don't necessarily want the blue to overpower this red. So I'm going to be mindful while I'm cutting that I don't invade that red. Like, I want to keep that red there so it does print in those areas. But I just want to add some interest with the blue, right? 
So I might cut in between and around and among the red. And I think I'm going to go in here and just add some more of these, these little asteroid looking things or whatever they are. Let's get like a lot of them in the beginning of the sequence. And then as I go out, I'll use less. Probably going to have to define my border a little bit here so that I don't invade the border. We want to keep a good clean border out there. Okay, now for these petals. Um, <clears throat> when I originally had these on my yellow, I shaded them out like I knew exactly what I wanted. So before I cut them, I photographed them on my phone so that I could replicate that shading. So now I'm going to work and I don't know, for some reason when I'm shading stuff, I just like to use a graphite pencil. Now I'm going to work to sort of emulate that as best I can. Because it would be total guesswork, right? If I were trying to figure out where to do the shading, if I didn't already have my yellow printed on this stencil. I think I'm gonna try to get some contours involved too, but I can't really do all the contours again because my, my islands will fall out. Gotta bridge it. The other thing that I like about this process of modifying on the fly is that, you know, when things occur to me, like I might've had a really good idea about how I wanna shade this in the beginning, but then if I'm like, okay, I got a better idea. I, I know I can make that look either more realistic, more interesting, more dynamic. Then I'm not stuck to that original iteration, right? Next one. Kind of looks like a Pringle. Let's see how do I shade that? Looks like I did this kind of a thing. I'm trying to be really mindful of my contours though, because it's going to be really important that they line up. It's going to look really weird if it's offset a little bit. So I'm trying, as I'm drawing here, I'm trying to be very careful about not going beyond the yellow. I want them to line up as perfectly as possible. If I was going to make an error here, I would make an error to put more blue and push beyond that yellow rather than less blue. But the contours in specific are going to be something that I really want to make sure that I nail them. This one's kind of very similar to that last one, so I'm gonna keep getting that around. This one is just kind of a weird squiggly dude, so I'm just gonna add like one little mark in there. And this one I could like this. Curved it. it looks like a bean or something. I don't know. Okay, this really curly one. It's kind of strange how to do that one. That. Yeah, that looks 
looks like I flip it around kind of a weird way here, so it's kind of like this. Like in this case, I think maybe it would be smart to add a little shading here, but maybe not a lot, just to show that it did flip and turn. Shapes are going to look a lot more descriptive now. Once I get this like basic shading in here. Okay, let's see. It's going to go. It's going to translate it up here. Okay, so that's going to be the shaded spot. All right, I'll save the best for last here. This one was interesting because I didn't know how to solve the problem of like these little guys. I didn't want to have to use a bridge on this because I knew it would really interrupt the image. So instead of using a bridge, what I did was I just didn't, I didn't print a yellow here, right? So I terminated my yellow early thinking, well, if I print blue there, it's going to look continuous anyway. And I did that on both curls. So, <clears throat> That's a strategy that could be used depending on your imagery, right? So I'm just going to kind of whip this around and get this to join up with the previous. Actually, I think I need that to be a little bit. There we go. That looks better. So that would kind of do this kind of a thing. And I'm going to have a little shading coming out from under here. So like maybe just a few marks to show that continuity. And then I did that same thing here. So like, so I'm going to whip that up and around like that. Make that look like that's connecting back over here. I think I had that way more dynamic in my image, my original drawing. I'm going to have to modify that a little bit. And then I want this to curl like that. And a little bit of shading here. Okay. All right. So now I define my borders once again. information go off on this side so I think I'll come through about right there all right so I'll most likely you know create some marks in here to bring out some of those petals a little bit more. Um, the limitations of this media just make it to where I can't get it near as clean as an etching, right? So um, I want to get as close as I can to that. So now it's all about cutting out my blues. And then I proof them all together on one good piece of paper. Um, that gives me either a bonneteer, which is essentially like, okay, that is the print the way that you execute, that is the print that's going to determine how your whole edition goes, which means you really want to write down everything that you did. What was the order that you printed everything in? Um, what exact colors did you use, right? Did you do a fade on one of them? How can you replicate that? Or if you're unhappy with the outcome of that, it's not going to be a bonus here, okay? It's going to be just an artist proof, right? 
at that point you go back and you revisit your stencils and go, well, what kind of changes could I make to make my overall Bonneteer print exactly like I want it, right? Because I'm gonna end up doing an addition of this. Um, I don't wanna create four eh, kind of mediocre, somewhat happy prints. I wanna be like really certain that the iteration that I'm looking for is something that I can repeat, be confident with, uh, because it takes a lot of work to print an edition, right? So I am getting pretty excited about this. Um, so next step, cut it out, proof it all together. <laughs>